So we are in the final script of our project, script 6A. Uh, so far we have taken our data, we've computed the before and after images, computed the difference and estimated an initial flooded region. Then we have added different masks to refine that. And now we have arrived at an estimate of what uh, of flooded pixels would be in the region. And now let's calculate the area uh, and see uh, what is the total area of flood that is affected uh, during this event. And we have, the first thing we need to do is, let's take our geometry. So our geometry contains the, the full region where the flooding happened. And let's just calculate the total area of the uh, district just to get an idea. So we'll just say total district area equal to geometry dot area. So that's fairly simple. We'll just divide it by um, 10,000 to get the area in hectare. And this would be our total area of the district. And print it and see the result. So about, you know, 230,000 hectare is the total area of the district. And now let's see out of that, what area is potentially flooded. So we have our flooded image, which is a one and zero image. So now we can use a, a standard area calculation technique where we multiply it with this image e dot image dot pixel area and then compute the stats on it. So let's go do that and say stats. Take the flooded image, multiply it by e dot image dot pixel area. So now we have a one zero image that turns into an image where each one pixel has is the value of the pixel is equivalent to the area of the pixel at that scale. So then we can do this reduce region function and we'll fill in the parameters. So the reducer we want to use is sum. We reduce it. just want to sum all the area values. Geometry is stored in the geometry variable. Scale, we'll just do this at native scale of 10 meters. The CRS here is transformed, we can just leave it at that. If there are more pixels, we can set this max pixels to a high number. And maybe we'll just give a tile scale to also to a high number so the competition doesn't time out and we can print the stats to see the total area. And this will be in square meters. So we'll have to convert that to square uh, to hectares also later on. And the result of the stats would be a dictionary. So we can just convert to flooded area, the stats dot get. The band name is water. So we'll have a water band in there once we get the result. And we'll get this number, we'll cast it to a, to a number. And then we can divide it by 10,000 to get the area in Victor. And this takes time. We can increase the scale a little bit to get it uh, complete faster. But uh, if you want to run it at native scale, you can always export this. And to export this, you just need to create a feature collection with one feature with null geometry and put this value as a property. And um, then you can export this as a table uh, with CSV format, then you'll end up with the final number calculation. So if your uh, competition times out, this is a strategy where you create uh, a, a feature collection with one feature with null geometry and the value of your properties could be the number. And that way you can export that feature collection and you get the idea. And here you can see this is the, the square meters of the uh, water. And we can now print the flooded area. And this will be in hectares. So we can now compare what was the total area of the district and what is the total flooded area of the district. And this is the methodology where you are now able to quantify it if you have a large region and you, the flood affected multiple districts or multiple regions, you can now know which districts are worst affected and you can detect more resources there. So, 
So hope you have a clear idea now how to work with Sentinel-1 image and what process you need to apply to arrive at a more robust flood detection methodology and flood area calculation. If you do end up using it for a project, do let me know in the comments. I would love to know how this uh, script behaves in different regions and different scenarios. Uh, always validate your results. So once you get some estimate here, do look up um, say news reports or you know uh, look at the situation in the ground, assess whether this number is correct or not because there are so many things that you're doing and maybe one small mistake will result in a very different number and you don't want uh, to uh, your analysis to be wrong because of a bug. So I generally like to validate this data and say, do this number, does this number look correct? Does this, is this in the same range or not? Does, you know, 1300 hectare is a reasonable amount of flooded area in the district? Is it ring true with what I'm hearing on the ground or not? So do validate, validate your data. And if you find the script useful, do let me know. Thank you.